Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia News Line. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you. Infiltration bit foiled near Pakistan border in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Two terrorists neutralized. Activists in Geneva highlight Pakistani atrocities in Balochistan and Sindh. And freedom of expression cannot be abused, Sri Lanka tells UN amid protest curbs. And now for all the details, security forces foiled an infiltration bid by neutralizing two terrorists along the border with Pakistan in Kupwara district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory, Indian Army officials said on Monday. A huge cache of arms and ammunition was also recovered from the possession of the slain terrorist. Security forces neutralized two terrorists thwarting an infiltration attempt on Sunday along the de facto border with Pakistan in Kupwara district of India's Jammu and Kashmir, Indian Army officials said on Monday. Based on specific inputs, troops were put on high alert and in joint operations by police and the army, the infiltrating terrorists were spotted and eliminated. A huge cache of arms and ammunition including two AK-47 rifles and grenades was also recovered from their possession. Identification of the slain terrorists was being ascertained, Kashmir police said in a tweet. On 25th September in the morning around 7.30 a.m. under the bad weather conditions, own troops which were on high alert, they observed two armed infiltrators in general area Tekri Nar in Machal sector. The troops then engaged the terrorists and the gunfight which ensued led to the elimination of both the terrorists. This comes nearly a month after security forces foiled multiple infiltration attempts by terrorists from Pakistan's side. India has long accused Pakistan helps terrorists infiltrate across the border to spread unrest in Kashmir Valley. Islamabad, however, denies the allegations. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail has stepped down from his post, making way for senior PMLN leader Ishaq Dar to become the country's new financial czar. Dar served as finance minister when Nawaz Sharif was prime minister and has been in exile in Britain for the past five years, evading corruption charges. Pakistan's finance minister Mifta Ismail on Sunday stepped down from his post to make way for senior PMLN leader Ishak Dar to take over the reins of the country's cash-strapped economy. The formal decision to put a 72-year-old Dar in the driving seat of the financial affairs was taken in during a meeting between Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his brother, PMLN Supremo Nawaz Sharif, in London this past weekend. Dar served as a finance minister when Nawaz Sharif was Prime Minister and went to the UK five years ago to evade conviction in a corruption case. He will first take oath as a senator. Mifta said in a tweet that he has verbally resigned as finance minister and will tender a formal resignation upon reaching Pakistan. He added that it has been an honour to serve twice as finance minister. Ismail is the fifth finance minister to be replaced in less than four years as Pakistan's economy has witnessed persistent turbulence while its current account deficit had widened starkly and rising inflation has put pressure on both families and businesses. Adding to the crisis, devastating floods have engulfed large swathes of Pakistan this month, killing more than 1,500 people and caused damage estimated at 30 billion US dollars, fanning fears that Pakistan would not meet its debts. And moving on, Baloch and Sindhi activists highlighted human rights violations by Pakistan recently through seminars and demonstrations on the sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva. They demanded the world body and the international community to intervene and stop the crimes against humanity. Baloch Human Rights Council, BHRC, organized a seminar titled Baloch Lives Matter 
on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva to highlight the ongoing human rights violations by Pakistan in Balochistan. They emphasize that the Baloch people are facing enforced disappearances and fake encounters every day under Pakistani occupation and also raised concern over several cases of extrajudicial killings and rapes, terming it all a genocide. They said Islamabad is only interested in Baloch wealth and resources and are not concerned about Baloch people. They urged United Nations to send a fact-finding mission to Balochistan for investigating the crimes against humanity and demanded intervention before it is too late. Pakistan is not a uh, civilized country. Pakistan is only interested in Baloch wealth, Baloch resources. They don't want Baloch people. They are abducting people, they are killing people. And the message is clear, the United Nations must kick out Pakistan. Meanwhile, members of the World Sindhi Congress also held a protest in front of the UN office in Geneva, highlighting heinous crimes by Pakistan against ethnic minorities including Sindhis, Baloch, Kashmiri and Pashtun people. The activists also blamed Pakistan's mismanagement and criminal negligence has also led to the unprecedented floods in Sindh, displacing millions. They blamed Islamabad for blocking natural flows of rivers. There is a climate element, but it's a man-made disaster, they said. In news from Nepal, Nepal's Supreme Court has issued a show cause notice to President Bidya Devi Bhandari after writ petitions were filed against her for not authenticating the citizenship bill passed by the country's parliament within a deadline of 15 days. The president's move has been termed unconstitutional by top leaders of the ruling coalition. The Supreme Court of Nepal on Sunday issued a show cause notice to the office of President Pidya Devi Bhandari for not authenticating the citizenship bill passed by both the houses of the parliament. Five separate writ petitions were filed last Thursday against the office of the president as the president cannot be directly indicted in any case. The petitioners have claimed that Bhandari did not fulfill her constitutional obligations by refusing to ratify it within the stipulated deadline of 15 days. Protests were also witnessed last week over Bhandari's decision, which top leaders of the ruling centre-left alliance have said has deprived many Nepalis of their right to citizenship. Although the constitution of Nepal says the children of parents who have acquired citizenship by birth will, will get citizenship by descent, thousands of youth are deprived of citizenship and voting rights for a lack of law. It also proposes citizenship to Nepalis who are citizens of foreign nations to do business and conduct economic activities in the country. The Apex Court has ordered the President's office to reply within 15 days. And moving on, Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri told the UN General Assembly this past weekend that his government unconditionally recognizes the fundamental right to the freedom of expression, which is sacrosanct and must not be abused. The remarks came amid protest curbs back home while the island nation grapples with its worst economic crisis. Sri Lanka's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri in his speech at the UN General Assembly said his government unconditionally recognizes the fundamental right to the freedom of expression which is sacrosanct and must not be abused. His remarks came amid protest cups back home while the country grapples with its worst economic crisis. Local media reported President Ranil Vikramasinghe has taken a tough stance against protesters who forced his predecessor Gotabaya Rajapaksa to flee and resign and ordered last Friday that demonstrations near key institutions, including his office, would be banned. Ali Sabri said legislative measures and law enforcement mechanisms were necessary to counter terrorism and radical ideologies. As he noted, Sri Lanka has been a victim of terrorism for several decades. We unconditionally recognize the fact that one has the fundamental right to freedom of expression, which we all treat as sacrosanct. However, we also be appreciated that this freedom must be within the constitutional order and must be exercised having regard to one's fundamental duty to express oneself within the confines of the law. Hundreds of people took to the streets of Sri Lankan capital on Saturday against the government's curtailing of protest rights. 
confronting riot police, tear gas and water cannons as authorities tried to keep them under control. The protesters were also calling for the release of pro-democracy activists who have been detained since they occupied key government buildings in July as they demanded a change to the governance system. And people in both Bhutan and India have welcomed the recent reopening of the border between the two countries after more than two years. Bhutan shut its border to visitors in March 2020 after detecting its first case of COVID-19. The Himalayan Kingdom now looks to boost tourism, a major source of income, to help revive the local economy. People on both sides have welcomed the move as Bhutan reopened its border with India for visitors last Friday after more than two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic, hoping to revive the local economy. The Bhutan government has introduced its new sustainable development fee on tourists. Indians, Bangladeshis and Maldivians will be charged a fee of $15 per day, while citizens of other countries will have to pay $200 US per day to visit Bhutan. Officials say the fees would be spent on projects to boost tourism and maintaining the environment. At that time, it was a very difficult time for people to go and go there. Now, it's very good to open it. Because the people have been down to go down to go down. They have been down to go down to go down. They have been down to go down to go down. They have been down to go down to go down. Wedged between China and India, Bhutan, known for its natural beauty and ancient Buddhist culture, shut its borders in March 2020 to visitors, a major source of income, after detecting its first case of COVID-19. Visitors had contributed about 84 million US dollars on average each year to the economy for the three years before the pandemic hit. The constitutional monarchy of fewer than 800,000 people has reported just over 61,000 infections and only 21 deaths. But the 3 billion US dollars economy contracted in the last two fiscal years, pushing more people into poverty. And devotees across India on Monday offered prayers in temples of Hindu goddess Durga to celebrate the beginning of Navratri or Nine Nights Festival. The festival is celebrated in honour of the nine manifestations of the goddess which symbolise the triumph of good over evil. Devotees across India thronged temples on Monday on the first day of the Hindu festival of Navratri or Nine Nights Festival when majority Hindus worship Goddess Durga in all her manifestations. Serpentine queues were witnessed outside the hilly cave shrine of Vaishno Devi in northern Katra town since early morning as devotees flocked in huge numbers to pay obeisance. During the festival, devotees worship Durga's nine incarnations in order to obtain her blessings. There is a goddess manifestation linked with each day of Navratri. We have regular two three years in our village. We have 10-12 and we have a new urge and a new urge. And we have a very happy heart for 10 years and we have a whole year of energy. Similar scenes were witnessed in northern Varanasi city where devotees offered flowers to idols of the goddess. Many devotees also observe fasts and some restrict their diet to fruits and vegetables, spurning meat, onions and garlic during this nine-day period. और श्रद्धा लोग श्रद्धा पूजा पाठ करते हैं नौ दिन चहल पर बनी रहती है इन वेस्टर्न मुंबई सिटी अ ह्यूज क्राउड ऑफ डेविडी स्ट्रॉन्ग दी फेमस मुंबा देवी टेंपल अकॉर्डिंग टू हिंदू माइथोलॉजी गॉडेस दुर्गा रिप्रेजेंट्स पावर द फेमिनिन फोर्स व्हिच गाइड्स एंड डिस्ट्रॉयज ऑल द इविल फ्रॉम अर्थ इट इज बिलीव्ड दैट ड्यूरिंग नवरात्रि द गॉडेस दुर्गा डिसेंड्स ऑन अर्थ टू रिड इट ऑफ डीमंस एंड ब्लेस अ डेविडीज विद हैप्पीनेस एंड प्रॉस्पेरिटी well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.